Hey folks, welcome to the first video of Old Car Guy. If this is your first time here, my name is Jason. Welcome to the channel. And uh, you guys have seen this truck on my channel if you've been around for a while over the course of the last year. We've done a lot of work to it. And today, I'm going to tell you exactly how much I've got tied up into it so far. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell you all the things that we did from the time we bought Dale, we went to New York to get it, and we trailed it all the way home, and all the work we've done to date. So let's start off with how much we paid for Dale. So when I first answered the ad for this truck, this 1977 Chevy C10, long box, camper special, no it wasn't a camper special, it was a heavy half, uh, had the 350 engine, 350 trans, and stock 273 gears. It was listed for 3,000 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. It was listed in a place in upstate New York that I knew was gonna be quite a bit of travel to get there. Now, we're going back to November of 2019, so this is all pre-COVID stuff. So when the negotiating was done, we settled on $2,500 US. So keep in mind that $2,500 US with the exchange rate at the time was $3,250 Canadian. So with that, we have our travel expenses, hotels, meals, fuel, U-Haul rental, and Canadian taxes paid getting it back, or not back into Canada, but getting it into Canada. So landed at my door was $4,760 Canadian. So once we got it back here and checked everything over, we had to put a new uh, master cylinder on it because, well, it didn't have very much for brakes. Um, that expense will go into the mechanical side. We'll get that to that in a minute. But the very first thing that we started with was the bodywork. Now, as you all know, it needed cab corners, rocker panels, it needed a couple of patches in the fender, and the tailgate was quite rusty. Well, pretty well all of these parts came with the truck, so I didn't have to expense any extra on getting those parts to get them repaired. So, we tackled the bodywork. Um, I say we, it was me. And I taught myself how to weld. We got the, all the panels kind of welded into place and body filled and painted to match. And then we were left with a truck that we could start putting back together again. So because most of the pieces that I needed to fix the truck body wise were included in the truck, we only had roughly about, we'll say, we'll call it $500 in paint supplies, materials, stuff like that, to get this thing back into the condition that you see it now. Then we tackled the lowering kit. So with this lowering kit, it was a single kit that I did for the front and the rear. But while I was in the front, I also replaced all the tie rods, ball joints, pitman, and idler arm, the sleeves, so that everything up front was new, so that when I started, I had everything done. So keep in mind, I also did brand new upper control arms, and downstairs I did the lower control arm bushings, and a new ball joint there. And in the rear, we did new shackles and hangers back there, as well as the C-notch kit from Belltech. And with all of that, we had $1,620 tied up into getting this sitting the way we wanted to. And then there was the drivetrain. This is where I spent a bulk of the money on this project. Initially, we were gonna stay with the original 350 and the transmission. Uh, but it was leaking out of every orifice, so I decided at the time I knew that Dad had a spare part, some double hump heads and whatnot down there at his place, so we got those and sent them off to the machine shop. And the machine shop is where, like I said, we spend a bulk of the money. So the block got bored out and decked. The heads got new valves, valve seats, valve seals, springs, full Monty on that, and they planed the heads as well. And there's a lot of miscellaneous things that we did while we were there as well, the gasket kit, and uh, I bought a used intake. The transmission itself was a used transmission that was labeled as no good, but ended up, we just put her back together. And with a few extra parts that we had to get, like a torque converter and a flywheel, we had this drivetrain all buttoned up. And everything all said and done, approximately we had $3,900 tied up into the drivetrain. 
And then we had a few miscellaneous things done, like we put this OBS seat into the truck. We had the carpet done. We had this tack installed. And we had the windows tinted. And then we decided to put some 18 inch American Racing wheels on it. We had 18 by eights in the front and 18 by tens in the rear. And of course, any shop truck wouldn't be complete unless it had some hand painted old school artwork done on the doors. And there was a lot of little things that we ended up doing with this truck that I didn't mention. I had to put a new battery in it, a new steady bearing, the ignition switch, a new key switch, a turn cancel spring inside the steering column. We did the radiator, we did a transmission mount, um, carb spacer for the carburetor. And don't forget that we did a brand new exhaust right straight through on this truck. So if you want to break it down, by buying the truck and getting it at home, we had $4,760. The exhaust was $350, $500 for the body, $1,620 attributed to the lowering kit and suspension. Wheels and tires were $1,300. And then we went to the drivetrain, which was $3,900. And then you've got a lot of your miscellaneous things that we had put in there at roughly about 900 bucks. You add all that together and that gives you roughly about $13,000. And don't forget, we sold the engine and transmission out of this truck for $750, as well as the wheels and tires that were on this truck for 400 bucks. So when you do the math, that adds up to $12,180. And that is where we stand today. So to some people, you're going to look at that and you're going to say, that seems like an awful lot of money. Well, I don't know about you, but that is a lot of money to me. Now, I did have a little bit of help in a couple of areas, and one of those areas was the YouTube ad revenue that I got from all these videos I made on Dale the Truck. The other place that I saved was labor costs. Everything that I did on this truck, with the exception of a few things, like rebuilding the transmission and getting the doors painted uh, by my buddy Paul, um, all the labor work that was done on this truck was done by me. Uh, the paint, the suspension work, the brake job, everything that had to be done to this truck, I did it. And that saves a ton of money if you've got the skill to be able to do so. I don't know what the dollar figure would be on that if I had to put uh, the hours involved uh, in doing this, but I could almost guarantee that uh, you probably could almost double the price of what you would have tied up into a project vehicle. So the moral of the story is if you're going to do a project vehicle and you've got yourself a budget in mind, if you know how to do it and you're skilled or you've got buddies who work for beer, then a lot of the times you can save yourself a pile of money by giving your own sweat equity into the project vehicle you're working on. You don't have to be a mechanic. You don't have to be a body man. I'm neither of those, but I grew up around it my whole life and I learned a lot from my old man. So the key points to take away from this video are A, do your own work. Save yourself a pile of money. Because like I said before, if you're going to put a dollar figure on labor, you can easily take a $5,000 budget and turn it into a $10,000 budget real quick. And if you don't have it, well, time to learn a new skill. Another thing, selling or salvaging used parts that you're taking off of your project vehicle, there's always somebody else out there who may need exactly what you're taking off your project vehicle. The engine and transmission the uh, old wheels and tires off this truck. I was able to make some of that money back and put it into the project. Another thing is, grab a camera, grab your phone, log your work, and put it up on YouTube. Because if you can get to the minimum threshold to be monetized on YouTube, well, you can make yourself a few bucks. Now, I never did disclose how much money I was able to get from YouTube uh, for the videos that I did on this truck. But in 2012, it was a couple thousand bucks. It's not big money, but at the end of the day, every dollar goes towards it. I'm going to save you a few bucks. And the last thing is, 
gift cards, rewards points on your credit cards, all that stuff comes into play. Now just because I had, you know, $12,000 almost tied up into this truck doesn't mean every single cent of that come out of my pocket. We sold some stuff, we had some points, we had some rewards, we had some gift cards, we had some YouTube ad revenue. All of this comes into play when it comes time to putting a vehicle together. So I hope you guys enjoyed finding out what it costs to get Dale in its present condition. Keep in mind with all that pricing that I just gave you that does not include the EFI system that I ordered just recently that's going to be going on this truck. Find out in some upcoming videos just exactly which system I ordered and for the videos getting it installed on this truck. I hope you caught the season premiere of season five. I'll leave that link right here so you can go over and check it out where me and my buddy Grant, who is Straight Six Fan, co-host the Car Guy and Six Fan show that we talk about cars, we have some games, we have guests. It's something that I think if you're watching this channel, you'll really enjoy. So hope you tune into that. Thursday evenings, we alternate every week. So last week it was on Grant's channel, this coming week it will be on mine. And we've got a guest coming up on the show, Luke from Coastal Auto Reaction. So guys, if you like what you see, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more and follow along on Dale's future builds, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a cent and I promise you lots of entertainment. I'm going to leave a couple of videos over here. If you guys want to catch up on some past episodes of Old Car Guy, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. We will see you guys in the next video.